Welcome to the home of the aha moment where you hear something for the first time and it seems familiar because it's true. My name is Jason. I've been preaching every Sunday for a while now and this is the channel I wish existed years ago. My goal here is to offer you ideas you can run with and to save you some time on giving you some direction and focus on your research. Today's passage is John 16, 16 to 22. The setting is the upper room. Jesus has just washed the disciples' feet and begins what's known as the farewell discourse. He's telling his disciples that he's leaving, that they will not see him and then they will see him. Separation is coming and it's going to be difficult. The passage begins with a very ambiguous little while. The disciples have no idea what this means, but we have the privilege of hindsight. In a little while you won't see me is referring to the crucifixion. In a little while you will see me is referring to the resurrection. At this point, I suggest doing a study on the words that Jesus is using for see because they are actually different words. Most English translations unfortunately don't reflect this. It's a study worth doing because it means that when the disciples see him after the separation, they will see him differently. Now, Jesus focuses on this time of separation, a time of sorrow, pain, lament, and grief. But he's encouraging them because their grief will be turned to joy. It seems as if the pain that they will go through is essential to the joy that's coming. It's not that their pain will end and be replaced by joy, but that their pain will be transformed into it. A key word here is turned. A fascinating word that means to emerge, to become, or to mark the transition from one state to another. It can also mean to be born, which is probably the meaning that Jesus is inferring here, judging by the analogy that he uses to press his point, which is a woman in labor. Childbirth is painful, so I've heard, but the pain is productive. Once the baby comes, it's clear that no matter how much it hurt, it was well worth it. The connection of pain and childbirth is not random here. In Genesis chapter 3, the fall of man brings separation. God knows pain is next, but because of his great love, he designates the introduction of pain to a temporary condition. Pregnancy, childbirth, new life. Because what's clear about pregnancy is that it lasts only a while. And when the hours come, the pain is turned to joy. Let's review. Jesus is preparing his disciples for an uncomfortable separation. Because of sin, Jesus must go to the cross. Then, after a time, they will see him again differently. And their pain will be turned to joy. The ambiguous time reference opens the door for us to apply this principle today. Instead of the cross and resurrection, we live in between the ascension and the second coming. We don't see him now, but we will soon. And when we do, we'll see him like never before. Now, concerning the time reference of crucifixion and resurrection for them, and ascension and second coming for us, I admit, I've taken some interpretive liberties here. I think it's a safe assumption. What do you think? Leave your comment down below. I believe that the challenge here is for disciples of Jesus to live in expectation. When we experience pain and suffering, we know that it will not be wasted because it's producing something beautiful. Also, it's only temporary, while the joy that's coming will be eternal, when not only will we see him, but we will be seen by him. Jesus ends with this, therefore, you too have grief now, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and no one 
will take your joy away from you. That'll preach.